Unsung, take one. Hey, my name is W.E.B. and I'm the lead singer of The Boys. Born in Fredericksburg, Texas, Wilbert and his twin sister Angelica was raised by their superstar father, Dennis Edwards, and loving mother, Allegra Baker. So I raised Webby over here in Texas, and he could sing, and I had him singing in the choir, and he was so good at it because he had all the people falling out all over the floor and rolling around. My friends would say, man, W.E.B., you really have a voice. I don't know who this W.E.B. is. Who is W.E.B.? I call him Wilbert. His name is Wilbert. Uh, you know, we, we start off in the church. Me and Willie been childhood best friends since, like his mama said, she had him in a choir when we was younger, you know. Sodom and Gomorrah Baptist Church is where Wilbert will finally get his shine, using his angelic voice to sing hymns for him. I was the one that had the woo 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 If that's what you had, that wasn't it. it. But I had it though, I could sing. That's not I it. Could, I could f*** it up. It don't sound girl. like it. Girl, <laughs> Whitney who? You f*** <laughs> shit up already. Right. Whitney had nothing compared to me, baby girl. Week after week, the congregation begged 12-year-old Wilbur to sing yet again. The way W.E.B. hit them notes. <sighs> you get a lot of people saying the same thing. You start to say, hey, well, maybe maybe I do have something. I thought he was Merlin Santana from Cosby Show. I said, he got something special. I said, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and push his career. We're going to go to L.A. But we always knew he was going somewhere in his life. Like, he, he was talented. He wasn't as talented as me. <laughs> started entering uh, talent shows. And that's where we met Lou Pearlman. He was like, hey man, I'm putting a group together and I think you'll be a great lead singer. And I was like, hey, I'm with it. And from there, that's where W.E.B. met the two members that would change his life forever. Marcus Gravy and Pat Dukakis. To create the group we all know and love today, W.E.B. and the boys. I have a little group of friends, and I get together and sing songs in a group. I say, fine, Will, but just sing a song in a group, and then what? Luke Hurlman, who has had previous success with Ghost Town DJs, Mia X, Positive K, Rex and FX, and Dale the Funky Homo Sapien, connected the group with three-time Grammy winner and certified hip maker, PB and James. Uh, 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 my, my little, little jelly, jelly ranch. My, My little jelly ranch. Yeah, the chords on that shit. I'm a sucker for you, baby. Hey, yo. How should I describe you? Sweeter than your diver. But your thoughts go deeper than a scuba diver. I met the other little boys in the group, and they were all looking better than Wilbert. I only did security for Wilbert and Pat. Hey, I didn't even know the rest of the was a group until the album dropped. The group's breakout song was a feature on Paula Abdul's sophomore album titled Jolly Rancher. From there, the trio's voice finally got a chance to shine. Watching W.E.B. and the boys, it was like watching the Jackson 5. We were the biggest act in the city. Things that went on backstage, put it like this. We used to call her Paula Crab Duel. Uh-oh. That's all right. That's all right. She has hepatitis. You're welcome. Just when the world thought the group would end up being a one-hit wonder, they finally dropped their first single. Meet me at the lunch line because girl, you're so Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a uh, meet uh, me the, in the lunch line. Coffee got cakes. Coffee got cakes. Yeah, we did we lunchable did, love. We did lunchable, lunchable love. love. Uh, uh, give me back my game, boy. And, uh, you know, that's what made W.E.B. and the boys a hit. The pompous duo would eventually write and produce the 31-track album, which went double platinum in seven months. What's my favorite songs? Hold your hands with a third grader. Can I ride your seesaw? Let me eat your tater tots. I mean, I, I should have been one of the boys. I mean, this is part of the reason why I transitioned. This was me before. Now look at me. With pending charges of lewd conduct, drug possession, and copyright infringement, Luke Hurlman had to release the group to his old friend and record executive, Tuffy McGee. You know, when Luke Pearlman came to me with the group, you know, I looked at W.E.B. and I thought to myself, the boy, he got talent. Me and my friends, we knew all the words to their songs. I never missed a concert. He brought his mom because he knew he's a minor, but I ended up f***ing his mom. 
The devil is a liar. Oh, it has nothing to do with the story, but you know, just wanted y'all to let y'all know what type of president and CEO of Tough Records I am. You know? Uh, our second song, which was uh, in the Ghostbusters movie, was called Do You Want Some of My Graham Cracker Girl? Quincy Jones. <laughs> Smacked him right on the ass. They had the look, the sound, the dances. Our third song, this one was popular. It was in the TV series Roots, and it was called Would You Take a Nap With Me, Girl? That was a banger. Oh, guess who wrote that? This up! <laughs> like most groups, with the rise of their success, friends and family become a financial burden. I remember I wrote a couple of songs. I'm lying. I just threw that in there because it, we on Unsung and I just wanted to lie. Them was crazy. Half of the budget was spent on me protecting him from his sister and her best friend. Why did your mama name you that? Because I cut the cord right. on these bitches. Stop playing with me. Coming up next. So what? I splurged and took a third of their money. Well, by the time I came to the group, it was already a shit show. He could get it. He could make me go back to the other side. I would, I would dabble in some wee-wee for him. He was like, I don't know what crack is. I said, just think of it as albino Skittles. No, that never happened. You want to talk about drugs? Oh, oh, here we go with the drug thing again, huh? I had one, one strong year doing drugs. It was not one year. It was 21 months. Hell, one time I had to actually ski out the goddamn hotel room. I was like, yo, do y'all see this man with this donkey and his cocaine? And everybody was like, no, nah, you tripping. And <laughs> they were right. I was tripping on LSD. You do not want to miss this.